let's use a mouse for this one because it, I think it's fun just sometimes to um, explore things that you wouldn't normally use because they might be a little awkward. So here I've established sort of the shape of the water. This is a little triangular shape here. And here I can kind of create the sort of motions of these jagged shapes down here for these leaves. One of the things you'll notice is that there's no like variety in this brush shape. So what you do when you're sketching, especially with the mouse, is you focus on the shapes. So here I've got this kind of bush shape that I need to sketch out that kind of covers up most of this area on the right. Then behind that, I have sort of these um, palm shapes that actually run down here. So I can kind of blob in those palm shapes right here with another shape there. And then here I can work on this tree right here, which comes down like that. And it has lots of these sub shapes doing this kind of thing. And then I need to erase here because there's a little cutout in there. And then there's some trees back here and I wanna be sure that they, they overlap properly. And some trees come up like that from behind there. See, when you're working with like a landscape and it has dense foliage, you know, it can get, it can get pretty intense. Um, so here, if I wanted to use color, I could, you know, if I wanted to like really cheat with this brush tool, I could come in and just kind of select that green color and then come back with a brush. Maybe I'll change brush to just the hard round pressure size brush. Um, I'll increase the size of the brush. You can do that by, um, in Photoshop, it's got, uh, you use the brackets to increase and decrease size. Um, you can also go over to the brush panel and manually select the size. So here it's pretty big. So I can do that. That gives me like the aggregate size of this whole shape, this whole area. Um, I can then take that, make it probably a little cooler, desaturate it, get it fairly dark. This is the darkest area and I can actually brush in that segment and then I can decrease that brush size. So I'm still using the mouse so I don't have responsive brush size. Then I know that from here this green is a lot warmer and a little bit lighter for this area. So I can use that green there to begin to sketch it out. And I'm going right on top of this this uh, previous layer not necessarily the best method. If I wanted to make this edge better, I could create, I could get like a better texture um, brush, like something that's uh, that's a little softer. Like here, this is a this is a, a custom like bush kind of brush. I can go in, and by messing with that edge, I can make it look a little more like foliage. It's kind of cheesy. Um, but just by messing with that edge, I can kind of begin to sketch it out. Um, you know, and I don't have to do color. I can just use like different value or I could just use line. It doesn't really matter. So there's, there's many, many options that I would say that you have for this. Like, um, so I don't want you to feel like you have to go about this particular way to sketch something. So this one comes from uh, Mike Hernandez, who is uh, uh, Squatch Gouache on, um, on Instagram. And what you do is you find the line tool, okay? And you want it to fill 
right? And you want to turn the, the stroke off, right? Make sure, because the stroke is like an outline thing, okay? You want it to be just a solid line, right? And then you can, by um, hitting the, uh, the bracket keys, you can change the size of the, of the line, or you should be able to, right? If you put the line down, it does that, okay? Um, here, and you change it to pixels, I think. Yeah. And what changing it to pixels does is it rasterizes the layer. Rasterizing means it, it works basically in a very simple way where it just makes pixels pixels. And then by hitting the bracket keys up like left and right, you can make bigger and smaller shapes. So this is very much like using a flat paintbrush of a certain size. Okay, so you see I get these shapes. And then I can go in with the eraser tool and I can modify those shapes. So you can see quickly how this could become a really interesting painting method if we apply this right. So what I could do is I could take my orange color, right? And I could start filling in background with this orange color, right? By just making a whole bunch of lines. And they can go in whatever directions and whatnot. I'm just kind of filling an area, right? I could bucket fill it, but this is actually kind of fun, right? This is a good one if you have a mouse. So if you have a mouse, remember this one. Then I could go in there, darken that. I could say, well, I'm gonna make my line smaller, right? Make it a lot smaller. I could go in and start filling in and making this happen. Then I can hold Alt and get my colors here from around that area and I can put lines over lines and I can begin to make the shadow shape in here okay then I can make it a um, little darker and I can make my lines smaller and I can go in and begin to get this shape make it very light and go in I get a little darker than that go in and do that and now I'm creating this whole area right and I can extend that out further to make sure that it's working I can get the top of that in right and then I can take this and make it thinner so it's looking more realistic right this one's cool when you're uh, when you're painting inorganic stuff, but what's cool is like you could do this for a landscape too, and build it up with these these particular uh, lines, right? And then remember that goes under, and then I can take that and I could sort of fade that line away, right? I could even approach it this way by pulling the line to it, and it creates a, a little bit of a jitter, right? Which is fine. This one's super cool. It's a little lighter here, so I could take this light color, pull that down, around, right? Okay, this is a super fun one, um, and a great one to use if you have a mouse. The reason that it's fun to, really fun and good to use with the mouse is because um, when you click, it shows you where the path is gonna go, so you, you kinda know what's gonna happen, and if you don't like it, you can hit, you can hit undo. Um, so you could go and make whole paintings just with the mouse this way, which I love that idea, you know, that this line tool as a pixels line gives you the potential to do that. You know, you can separate the stuff out into layers as well, and that, that'll make it a little easier too, right? Because then you can hold Alt, set your hand on the keyboard, you got that, and come back. And I'm doing this with the mouse right now, so just so you know, like it can be done. Um, then you can take that, go there, boom, there, 
boom, and you take light bit and just continue painting. Right? So I love this because this one's a, a very democratic method, you know. You don't need any fancy equipment, just your brain. I like to do color sketches in a very like quick and specific way. I'll make this marquee tool. Okay, so I'm gonna make this sketch this way. I will take a sort of average tone, like say the blue of the sky, fairly light but not too light, and I'll bucket fill that area. Then I'll go on top of that, I'll take a brush, like a hard round brush. I love simple brushes like that. Um, a darker version of this will wind up being in the water and maybe less saturated. So I know that I can take a large version of this, this brush and I can br start bringing that into the water immediately. You know, and I'll, I'll have pops of it showing up in the corner and around here showing up there and I'll have little bits here and there, right? And then I know that I need a green and I need a shadowy green that's sort of dark and the shadowy green will wind up around here. Um, it'll go up into the trees in here. Um, a cold and super dark one will go over here. And then that'll get cooler and darker as it gets reflected into the water. Or maybe it'll get cooler and lighter. This will be the reflected area here. Then I know it'll get towards the middle and more desaturated as we go back into this background. And I can play around and put a variety of greens back there to create this background register and even pull some yellow greens that are pretty light in there. And then I can have like a brighter, more saturated green in the front here. And then I can pull in some yellow green light stuff to kind of get these algae blooms in. I can focus on kind of just shape language and I can use some of the colors in various places to, to kind of create a little bit of textural interest. And I can spend 20 minutes just sort of working up a quick, um, a quick image like this. I can take that, make it lighter, cooler, and I can work on just the reflection of, of this area in, in the water. And since I've got that ground color established, I don't have to worry as much about filling every little gap, you know? I can take this, I can warm it up and lighten it up so that now I'm working into the, the light shapes here. I can make it even more yellow, more warm, more saturated if I want to. And I don't have to, f I probably shouldn't fill up every little gap because there's still sky that you can see through there. So I can begin to sketch this stuff out. I can take the sky color, lighten it up, and I can find, I can begin to find like cloud shapes up there. And if I paint over something, I can just so select the color using that Alt key, um, repaint it, bring it back. Then I can use the eyedropper to select it by holding Alt in Photoshop. And that's usually kind of a universal hotkey. So I can do a little sketch this way. And this is with the hard round pressure opacity brush. This would actually work really well with a mouse too. Um, just a simple hard round brush. 
and because what's happening is you're just sort of focusing on like shapes you know with the mouse it's always going to be this full size kind of thing um, so you have to kind of you know hit the size keys up and down to make different size marks if you want um, so really what we're thinking about here is just you know how do I bump up color and how do I create interesting shapes And again, this is just a sketch thing. And I don't really have any like super dark values in, so I could create a very dark green here. And I could get kind of small with it, start to lay in some of these like really dark areas that I see. As soon as you start laying in real dark stuff, things get fun because you start to develop a contrast range. Whenever you start to develop contrast, things get really interesting. And so here I'm just using a mouse. Um, again, I can select these colors and I can pull these shapes back more the way I want them. I can select any color I want, pull these shapes in, cut them out from each other. Again, when you see me select a color, I'm just hitting Alt. I'm using the eyedropper tool to select a color. There is this water um, through here, and I want to be sure to get that shape in. It's a nice shape. Um, it's very sky colored. Maybe I should even do a modified cloud color there so it's real bright. And then I could probably work on getting these little shapes in here. And then I can bring in some lighter colors into the water here. And then I should probably bring like some version of color like that down. Reflect this shape a little better. And then I need a darker color like this in here to help that along. And I probably need some different varieties of darks in here too. And then I probably need something slightly dark, maybe not that dark in there. So what's interesting here is like when I zoom out, it kind of looks very landscapey. Um, and remember, this is just a sketch and you know, I could spend 20, 30, 40 hours on this guy developing this and make it look super realistic. Um, but when I'm sketching, I like to do things like this that push the bounds of, of what I can do and force me to think in a certain way that I normally wouldn't think. And I do that by limiting tools. So um, these are just a few sketch methods. And I want you to try out all these methods and see what you can come up with and have fun, you know, the uh, check out the video on the particular subjects you could pick from and go from there and uh, try to make something that's kind of more up your alley and and is a subject that you really want to pursue